My name is Dave. I'm a depot level FLIR technician and today I'd like to explain to you what I think about the Gimbal UFO FLIR video. This is the one that has the object that appears to be moving independent of the horizon instead of the whole scene moving as such. And in this video I'd like to explain to you why I think that's exactly what happens. So some debunkers look at this patent that they found online. Okay, it's got a bunch of diagrams. Look at all these things. I don't know what's going on with this. Optical pass. Man, confusing. I, I don't know what to make of this. Big long explanation of what's going on. Don't know. Then they like, hey, well, we found something. There's a derotation device. See how it has rotation in the name? It's right there. It's on the diagram. So somewhere in the lens is there, something goofy's going on, and that's probably what's making that whole glaring, flaring thing going on. Gotta happen, right? It's gotta be it. So the question is, does this object only appear to rotate due to the internal lenses of this derotation device? These internal lenses that somehow refract the image? And the answer is no. This video will explain why. Disclaimer. In this video, all thoughts are my own. I represent no company or government agency. Hey, this is Dave here. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the gimbal video that was uh, released not too long ago and the controversial rotation. So I work as a deeper level FLIR technician and a government contractor as such. So what does that mean? Um, FLIR technician is somebody who works on forward-looking infrared or FLIR. Um, what kind of work do I do on them? Well, I repair them, I test them, I maintain them, upgrade them, program them, that kind of thing. Uh, depot level means I have pretty much the highest level of getting involved with these systems. I can break them all down to nuts and bolts and build them all right back up again. So I have an insight on what's going on in that scene. Let's see what we can uh, figure out here today. Hypothesis. The gimbal object does rotate independent of the horizon and it moves as a whole unaltered object. This can be easily explained in terms of the optics involved. This can also be explained without disclosing proprietary information. Take this video I recorded of an FA-18 moving away from me. The heat signature from the jet makes a peculiar pulsing and a, a sharp spiking. Some people refer to this as glaring or flaring. Here's another video of an FA-18. This time it's banking. You can see the heat signature change as well as the jet changing itself. After comparing these videos to the gimbal video, I reached out to my friend, filmmaker Jeremy Corbell, to discuss the matter. He suggested I make this video that you're seeing right now. All right, so there's a picture of the ant flare, which I crudely represented here couple of tubes and an eight ball but it'll get the point across let's assume this is the body mounted infrared camera this is going to be your optics group that rotates independently of the body camera thus changing the horizon and this will be your elevation it can move up and down like this yes it cannot move left to right Okay, in this video path illustration, we see that the roll gimbal, which would be your optics, and the body mounted, which is illustrated there, are separated by line A, which would be right here. That is your separation, your demarcation, if you will. Okay, let's talk about infrared optics. This might be a little confusing, so I'll go through it kind of slow. As far as infrared optics, 
when you think about lenses and windows, things that look like this, that could be made out of silicone or germanium, something like that. They're uh, semiconductor metalloids. They allow the infrared wavelength to pass through. Is in terms of windows. They can also configure the infrared. And what I mean by that is, if you have a focus lens, it'll obviously focus. The same with a zoom. There can be a continuous zoom or a flip zoom, step zoom. So those lenses are intended to provide a function. Focus zoom, allowing pass through. And uh, the thing with that is they're very expensive. Um, you could Google these elements, especially germanium and just see what they go for. So they try not to use these if they don't have to. They're just used on a as needed basis. So that being said, when they want to have a path, all right, got my paperwork, such as this, where this video path kind of twists and turns, and this is just two dimensional, but it goes all different crazy directions. What they do is they use something like this. And this is what I call an infrared mirror. Now, this mirror just kind of will reflect like a typical mirror, but it's a metal, it's a highly polished metal. So it will reflect the daylight image, but what it's intended for is an infrared image. Now, they also have configurations like this. This is also an infrared mirror, but this one has two 45s, 245, 245 degree angles. And you can see when I turn, it rotates the image. So if the infrared is passing through this, and this is pointed back at you, they can also make one that is pointing forwards by means of boop, boop, boop that kind of angling to pass the infrared video signal through and yet rotate it without distorting, contorting, or changing the video scene whatsoever. That's the heart of the whole argument. Okay, now let's take a look at the same infrared mirrors with the FLIR 1 camera. rotating without distorting okay so let's start off with your scene here you have a cloud horizon and the object that is rotating independently of it so it's going to come in through the front window something like that it's going to bounce off uh, some of these infrared mirrors it's going to go through the afocal four optics. And then this is where we have the demarcation of the tube. Okay, it's going to pass through. It's going to go through the derotation device. It's going to bounce off of 342 there, come down into the infrared camera. Okay, if you follow this blue hyperlink right there, you'll probably find this tidbit of information about the derotation device 330, which may include reflective optical elements, e.g. minors, and can be, for example, an all-reflective derotation device. What that means is it's not going to be using windows or lenses as such, but it's going to be using infrared mirrors. Here's a video of a FLIR looking at an 800-degree Fahrenheit soldering iron it's positioned next to a metal test bench leg for reference, and it's behind the FLIR. I'm using the same dual IR mirror assembly and angling it back towards the side of the FLIR so it captures the heat signature of the iron. I'm then rotating the IR mirror assembly with my hands to simulate a one-axis roll rotation. This is what the scene would look like if the operator rolled the at FLIR without the derotation device. Notice the entire scene rotates proportionally. 
The rotation is also relatively smooth, even by hand. Even though the heat signature of the iron saturates the scene, the shape of the iron is relatively consistent, with the exception of some auto gain and level features. The dual IR mirror assembly only mirrors the scene, and it doesn't refract the heat signature of the soldering iron. This demonstrates that even if an all-reflective derotation device is used to observe the scene, it would not alter anything about the infrared scene, as it is purely reflecting what it sees. Conclusion Based on the video evidence, available online information from Raytheon, and personal experience, there is no reason for me to conclude anything other than the gimbal object does indeed rotate independent of the horizon. Hey, thanks for checking out my video, and please feel free to look through the other videos I have on the YouTube channel, and leave comments and suggestions and whatnot, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.